ki the health education system i always say that the growth of the private sector has happened because of the significant investment that the government made on health education and the quality of the doctors in india the peer is an important uh, individual and i hear i think the peer includes everybody who's uh, involved in third party payment whether it's the cghs or the large purchasers like bhel and their ability to think through the payment mechanisms to keep the cost down the efficiency is high and the quality up as well as keep fraud out of the system i think is a big challenge and once again an opportunity but anyway this concept is well known the key considerations towards this interconnected system are really interoperability and ability to have uniform healthcare identifiers based on a national id not just for the individuals but also for the providers the it and the it technologies whether they're barcodes or telemedicine multiple other and and i'll go into a bit of depth on this one and health information exchanges whether they are individual system exchanges or a multitude of exchanges that need to talk to each other but all these are critical factors in the interflow of information and our ability to create a system where information flows seamlessly move on i'm actually going to connect, skip this slide now because i believe all of you are a very well informed audience and you know the outcomes but i'll move to sharing a little bit of the apollo uh, it system when we were really visualizing this this was our third round of individual development and uh, when we were visualizing this uh, about 5 years ago we we put out an rfp and did a global bid or tendering our view of the space was not the traditional view of a patient which was registration stay treatment or discharge but really tried to encompass a bit more into the system which looked at follow up case so we could do research by now our consultants had been doing um, you know fairly cumbersome follow up of patients who had been 5 years post cabg 10 years post cabg it included disease management because we realized the impact of chronic ailments on the healthcare infrastructure system and crm because i believe that we should always be open to learning from new systems and the crm methodologies which are happening in the retail sector in the airline sector in the banking sector really leave a lot for us in healthcare to learn from we also thought it was important to have search options whether it was specialties individual locations within apollo remote appointment system so that you could do web based and then we finally said that our view changes from this traditional view to really the continuum of the entire customer view from the time he started thinking of a healthcare problem choosing a hospital having the outpatient or the inpatient and then following up in the continuum of care so that really became our challenge of what we needed to look at it then we started looking at the technologies inside and it was not just the integrated his or the packs it became equipment interfaces barcodes with rfid self service kiosks mobile clinical assistance biometrics intranet dynamic queue management systems how many of us have walked into hospitals and seen them crowded all of us right so what can we do to change the queue management mechanisms in a healthcare environment are there better more dynamic methodologies of predicting of scheduling and of resourcing so that we can remove bottlenecks and improve the efficiency and then knowledge and drug databases i asked a consultant one day what's your biggest nightmare and he told me that almost 50 patients a day get discharged with my signature i'm not looking at every one of the discharge summaries i don't know if one of my residents has written something wrong the ability to have technology back them up with algorithms which are built on doctor's knowledge drug drug interfaces drug reactions drug to condition checking mechanisms and counter checks all these are significant players as we build up into a hospital information system and we began to realize understand communicate with the rest of the ecosystem build partnerships and build individualized products towards this this has been the last 5 years journey um to today a little bit of the road map where we are uh the the horizontal integration really of uh, the hospital information system we conceived as an erp for a hospital mr satyanarayana you'll be happy to hear that uh we knew that other industries had the benefit 
we did not want to buy the smaller systems which were conceived for small hospitals. We were not here to buy the RPs of the international world, which had not yet been so proven in healthcare or were very expensive and interfaced with best of breed lab information systems or radiology information systems because the interfaces were expensive. So we chose to build round up a healthcare dedicated ERP system. We chose an international partner for this. So the first layer, layer is really the uh, CPOE, the physician order entry system, case, patient care management, the administrative services, the financial, the clinical. Next layer is the integrated applications of where you're going outside. It's the PACs. It's the radiology interface so that the radiologist can do interpretations at home. It's the EMR sat on top of the HIS. And it's the SMS module so that now our patients are getting cute little SMSs about appointment scheduling. Our ward duty doctors, if a patient in the ward has low blood sugar or an extremely high blood sugar, the machine will uh, message the HIS. The HIS will message the ward doc doctor and he will get an SMS. So you cut cycle time significantly, you improve response time, and therefore you improve quality of care. This is a simple example of how technology can help in the day-to-day -day world of making healthcare a better place. So this is really the core HIS product. Moving on, some more of the web-enabled components is the appointment, e scheduling, the PHR. So that today PRISM is something that every outpatient and inpatient coming into gets uh, offered in our first location where we've done the full implementation. PRISM is the personal uh, record of the patient and is also linked to an information website. So if he's a known cardiology patient, he's going to be getting more information about cardiology. If he's, you know, a, a mother with a child who has an epilepsy problem, we'll do more focused stuff for them. Right, Dr. Pritika? <laughs> so, it, and it goes on. If they've had a lab test in the morning, they don't have to come back. They can stay in their office, download based on their personal ID and, and get their report. So multiple things like that. The communication with other providers uh, or suppliers is really the supply chain management. Uh, as Mr. Satinarayana said, very complex environment, lots of work to be done. But the good news here is that lots of the suppliers are also very evolved. So they're ready to work in this. The CRM is the customer interface module. The insurance application or the claim management, we're working to try and make that happen. And the e-commerce application. And finally, the last piece is really the toughest one, but this sits on top of the entire enterprise as well, which is the clinical decision support. Here we're not building this or even building with local partners. We're actually partnering with the international uh, vendor. The drug support system or the DSS, the drug database was built in-house, uh, but we, you know, we are trying to share this. And finally, the document management and the data warehousing. So we built this layer by layer on this, and each one of these integrate, and I'll share some of those, that vertical integration ideology. But just a quick snapshot into, uh, you know, where this is. Uh, we believe that we will be able to use the effective uh, cost and sourcing mechanisms of the cloud technologies, because this is con currently evolved, planned as a centralized system, which will be hosted in some servers and be able to service multiple environments. So uh, right now we conceive that the, we will have five hubs, and I'm happy to see some of the IT team in the audience. So we have five hubs which will service the, the central data or the, the main uh, data center with all the disaster recovery will be central in Hyderabad. Five servers will have the other, uh, the hospital information. All satellite centers, so in this city we have nine locations. All nine locations will get linked into this one and all the others uh, will then get connected. The clinics as well as the satellite centers will have this, uh, you know, real-time connectivity, whether it's T1 line or other dedicated connectivity, which will not be satellite because our fiber optic is really very good and be hosted out of these four servers. So the main hospitals, the satellite centers, the clinics, the telemedicine centers, EPAs who we interact with, the pharmacies, and all the others in a need-based manner will have the EHIS, the Oracle Financial System, the pharmacy uh, system, which is a separate uh, system by another international vendor, Apollo eDoc, which is the scheduling system, 
uh, health. I 